What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here and today what we are going to be doing is we are going to be breaking down the 2019 Jaguars free agent signings. There weren't a lot of big splash signings except for obviously Nick Foles, but there's a couple of low-key signings that I think are going to end up working very, very well in the Jaguars' favor uh, next season. But before we get into that, uh, I want to make an announcement, and that is that the Jaguars have just signed running back Alfred Blue to a one-year contract. So he's going to be joining the running back room with Thomas Rawls and Leonard Fournette as well. And uh, I think that's a pretty solid signing. It's a good depth signing uh, for sure. You know, a little bit of a reliable running back if like Thomas Rawls goes down we need another guy to step in I don't know what this means as far as drafting a running back goes because now we just got two really mediocre running backs backing up Leonard Fournette I don't know if it's still going to be a late round possibility that the Jaguars still snatch up a running back I would like to say that that is a yes and that they will try and get a rookie to come in and compete uh, for this job as well and I would like to see that and that's kind of what I'm hoping for you know like a fifth sixth round rookie to compete and and uh, try and make it on the squad, I think, would be a good move by the Jags. But I don't know how that is going to work now that we signed Alfred Blue, because you got to imagine Blue Rawls. Those guys are both, you know, mediocre average running backs that did pretty well for their former team in certain situations. So you really don't know the situation on where if the Jags are going to be drafting a running back now or not. Or, you know, what the Jags are really truly going to be doing at the running back position. But anyway, he's going to be added onto the list of grades for free agents that we are going to be giving out in this video. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, hit that intro. One to go up top, dumps it off, cross the middle, four down. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treve from Treve Talks here for another episode of Treve Talks. So first of all, we're going to kick things off with the Jaguars' most recent signing since it's fresh in my mind and Mr. Alfred Blue. Alfred Blue, I think, is going to be a pretty decent, solid signing. You know, he was always kind of a reliable every now and again down back for the Houston Texans. He was never one a guy that blew you away. He was never a guy that you had on your fantasy team really carrying the load. He's not a guy that's really going to be a starting running back or a guy that's going to win you games. But as far as a depth signing goes, to add him into the room with uh, Thomas Rawls as well, I think that's a pretty solid depth move on the Jaguars' part, trying to make sure that this running back room is really experienced. But the fact is, is he got three running backs that are very injury prone. And, and that's the... Uh, and that's kind of the kicker there is that Alfred Blue, he does have a history of injuries. So does Thomas Rawls and so does Leonard Fournette. So I don't really know how I feel as far as that goes. But I guess we are just going to have to wait and see. I think he's a solid running back and I think he's a good change of pace back as well. Uh, he's pretty good receiving out of the backfield. So uh, this overall Alfred Blue signing is going to be getting a C plus from me. I think it was all right. It was solid. It wasn't anything that blew my socks off necessarily by any stretch of the imagination, but I think it was a pretty decent overall signing as a whole, and uh, I can't wait to see how it pans out, you know, if Alfred Blue can stay healthy and, you know, get on the field, I'd like to see what he could be able to do for us, and I think that he can be able to do decent, pretty good things for us once he is on the field for the Jags. Next up, we have running back Thomas Rawls. Thomas Rawls was signed uh, before the free agency period even started. I believe it was during the postseason when Thomas Rawls ended up getting his contract offered. Um, I'm going to be giving this one another C+, plus because I think the Jaguars running back room with Blue, Rawls, and Fournette has kind of downgraded from TJ, Corey, and Leonard, and you guys might disagree with that, and I definitely see a case to make that the running back room improved because of two veterans. Veterans, they aren't really necessarily long-time vets, so you know, it, you can't really use that excuse, but you know, you had Corey Grant, who's really great at receiving out of the backfield. Same thing with TJ Yeldon. Corey Grant was the definition of a change of pace back, and I still low key hope the Jaguars find a way to bring him back, especially because he has yet to be signed. Uh, I'd love to see Corey Grant back in the old black and teal. But Thomas Rawls, he was a starting running back for Seattle for a while. Uh, he had a couple of solid, solid 100 yard games, but he ended up getting injured. And you know how the Seahawks are, they seem like they have a different running back every single year. And in fact, every single game, it seems like the Seattle Seahawks put in a new running back, but Thomas Rawls is a guy that has some starting experience, and uh, 
he's a speedster as well. It's kind of a power back. You know, he's more of a one cut kind of guy, but. I think Thomas Rawls is going to be a decent, solid signing again for the Jaguars. I'm going to be giving it another C plus because I don't know uh, really the risk of bringing in a guy that has injury problems to back up Leonard Fournette and to be kind of a third down back uh, role is going to favor the Jags, especially given his injury history. But the fact that he's not injured now, and if we're going to go based off of a 16 game regular season and what I think Thomas Rawls can do, I think a solid C plus is fair. Next up, we got a couple of linemen. We got Cedric Ogabai, Ogabichi. I don't really know how to say it. Uh, you guys, if you know how to pronounce it, leave a pronunciation in the comment section down below. Also, Tyler Shatley as well, as well as AJ Can. What I like to consider these guys is good offensive linemen depth signings. I'm going to be making another video later this week talking about the depth of the offensive line and why I think the Jags are kind of smart in what they did and bringing back certain guys. Uh, guys like AJ Can, who you know has been solid he doesn't he doesn't get hurt too often but you know when he when he comes in he's kind of last year he was the consistent you know he was always on the field for the Jags at the offensive line position not to say that he was great but you know he's going to be a solid backup to whoever we are going to be having starting at that guard position whether it be you know like a Will Richardson or another rookie that we end up bringing in uh, via the draft and, uh, you know, you got Ogabichi, who, uh, as of right now, I think is slotted in as the right tackle starter, but that could change on draft day as well. Um, if the Jags draft like a Jonah Williams or a Jawan Taylor, he's going to end up being on the bench. He's going to be a solid backup uh, offensive lineman as well. So, you know, I'm judging these guys based off of what I think they are, and that is depth signings. Tyler Shatley, one of the most underappreciated Jaguar offensive linemen. Uh, he is a Swiss Army knife. You know, he comes in at the center position, he comes in at the guard position, he even comes in at the tackle position, and he's not necessarily an all-around great offensive lineman. That's why he doesn't get the start, but as far as a depth guy, and a backup and a guy to come in when your guys get hurt he's a really really solid piece and he knows this Jaguar team I know that obviously the offensive scheme has uh, changed with Filippo but you know he's been on the team for now I think four or five years so he is gonna be a solid solid Swiss Army Knife guy like he has been since he's came in to Jacksonville and I'm really 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 happy with that signing and I'm really happy with all three of these signings especially because of what I think it entails and it entails that the Jaguars are gonna have very solid offensive lineman depth at every position and I liked all three of these signings so with that being said I'm gonna be giving it a B plus I know that that is weird and <laughs> it's weird to give you know backup offensive lineman a B plus grade but with depth and how they're going to be coming in when people are either injured or maybe even need a break or something like that I think these are very very solid pickups for the Jaguars at the depth position on the offensive line next up we have Jeff Swaim tight end former Dallas Cowboys tight end now this is another signing I really really like especially especially if the Jags bring in a guy like Hawk if Hawk comes in and he's going to be our receiving tight end with Swaim in there on the two tight end set, because you got to imagine that's what the Jaguars are going to run, that's what they like to run, uh, I think he's going to be the very, very, very solid blocking tight end, and he's going to do his job and what he's asked for here in Jacksonville. I think he fits the Jaguars mentality. I think Doug Marone's really going to like him because he's a tight end that could really, really block and block well. He did put up decent stats before a wrist injury. He had 26 catches for 242 yards and a touchdown, which is all right <clears throat> for a tight end, especially if his caliber is somebody who's not necessarily a go-to target. And he wasn't really a go-to target for uh, Dak Prescott. But I think in this offense and what we're going to be asking him to do, and that's mostly block in two tight end sets, I think that he's going to be a really, really solid pickup. He's going to kind of fill the Mercedes Lewis uh, role. And again, I really hope, you know, I think the Jags are going to be bringing in a rookie tight end no matter what to be the, be the pass-catching tight end. But, uh, you know, Swaim is going to end up having to be the pass-catching tight end if he's going to be jumped in there with, like, James O'Shaughnessy or Ben Koyak. You know, that's that's not a two tight end set you want because you got two guys that are pretty much known for being blocking tight ends. So uh, for this signing to work, the Jags are going to have to draft a receiving tight end. You need either Hawk, Irv Smith, uh, Knox, you know, all those guys that you can get, you know, later on or even in the first round. Um, to be the Jaguars catching tight end but as far as what Swain's going to be asked to do which is going to be to be a blocking tight end I think that this was a solid pickup for the Jags I'm going to be giving it a solid B but if they don't draft a tight end uh, then I'm going to be giving this a C because it's it's not going to work out unless the Jags draft a true receiving tight end in the NFL draft 
Coming up next, we have wide receiver Chris Conley. I am a big, big, big fan. Big fan of Chris Conley. I'm excited to see what he can do in this Jaguars offense, and I think he fits very, very well in this wide receiver core. Speedsters that can take the top off the defense and has good hands. And he also is off the field best friend with our new quarterback, Nick Foles, so that helps. They did spend some time together in Kansas City uh, when Nick Foles was there. And Conley said that they grew a friendship, became best friends. So, you know, that connection is there. And I think Chris Conley is going to be a guy to watch out for in Jacksonville next season. Patrick Mahomes really made him. He made he made a lot of big plays, but he was making big plays with Alex Smith as well. He was a very, very solid, you know, kind of slot wide receiver. But you got a whole team of basically slot wide receivers that are just really, really speedy. But I think Conley is going to find his way into the starting rotation. I think probably Marquise Lee. D.D. Westbrook and himself, that's going to be the top three. And, you know, you got D.J. Chark as well coming in at at the four spot. So I think him and Conley are going to be kind of switching in and out uh, as far as that goes. But I really, really do like this signing as a speedster and somebody who has chemistry with Nick Foles. And I think bringing that to the table was a smart, smart move by the Jaguars front office, something that we can't really say too often that the Jaguars front office pulls off as a smart move. But signing Chris Conley, especially to the contract he signed with, which was not a lot. It was like a two-year, $1.6 million contract or something like that. It was not a lot of money. And to sign him for such little money and, you know, for him to ball out and really meet, uh, reach for the stars. I am really excited to see what Chris Conley can do. And I'm going to be giving this one an overall A grade. I think that this was a really, really good pickup for the Jags. And I think it's going to be an underrated signing uh, when we go back and look at the free agency class of 2019 and see what Chris Conley has done uh, in the 2019 season with his best friend Nick Foles at quarterback again. I'm really, really excited to see what Chris Conley is capable of doing. And finally, last but certainly not least, we're talking about the new franchise quarterback, Nick Foles. Nick Foles signed an $88 million contract that has a max value of $101 million. Now, I'm going to give this two separate grades. One grade for the contract and one grade for the overall signing. As far as the contract goes, that's a D+. Plus. Especially because you're signing this guy off of pure potential. You know, he was a Super Bowl MVP. He has some of the best playoff stats you know, that anybody's ever had, and I completely understand that. This guy's 30 years old. I think he has not yet hit, well, he's hit his prime, but he's not necessarily out of his prime just yet. But to give this guy that much money, especially when there wasn't a market for him, you know, we've talked about this in, four, in other videos, talked about how no one really wanted Nick Foles because they knew the Jags were going to go after and get him. Uh, and they signed him to that big money contract based off of respect from what I hear. And that's just silly to me. Like, I don't like that. I don't like that move. I don't like how much money we're paying Nick Foles. I will love how much money we're paying Nick Foles if he ends up being tremendous and, being, you know, takes us to the promised land, which, you know, it could happen. And we all could be talking too soon about this contract. But as far as the contract goes, I'm giving it a D plus. I did not like the contract. But the signing as a whole, you know, as you step back and realize that the Jags aren't trying to draft a rookie, they're not trying to blow it up and I think that's kind of smart I think that's smart the Jaguars are in a win now mode and I'm really excited to see how that win now mode unfolds and it was really obvious when they signed Nick Foles that they were in that mode because if they were trying to blow it up and really try to build a new team they would be drafting a quarterback like Dwayne Haskins or even Kyler Murray and that might still be on the table who knows as a first round selection if they're still on the board we'll see what the Jags do but I, I don't see that happening and that's another video for another day but Nick Foles like I said he has a lot of playoff passing records he's thrown seven touchdowns in a game I think he has the record for most consecutive completions like if we don't ask him to do complicated ass shit and our wide receivers step up to the plate and play the way that they can play I think Nick Foles is going to be a really really good pickup for the Jags and I think the momentum is going to be swinging in Jacksonville's favor uh you know there's a lot of talks during the offseason and seasons in the past as well where the people are saying that the Jags are just one quarterback away well let's see how true that is with Nick Foles and see if we pick the right guy to take this franchise into the promised land Nick Foles overall as a signing is going to be getting a B plus I think that with all the records he has and all the potential he has he has all the opportunity in the world to take the Jags to the next level but 
This is the Jacksonville Jaguars, and nothing that they ever do ever pans out, so I'm not going to be too optimistic about it. But with that being said, I am excited to see what Nick Foles can do for us. And that was my 2019 Jacksonville Jaguar free agency signing grades. What you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Trey Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Trey Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Von Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody at work with me. Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.